Hello everyone, welcome to 3 Minutes Engineering Concepts. The idea of this channel is to explain any engineering concept in 3 minutes. I will try to explain any fundamental to advanced concept in mechanical engineering and material sciences in 3 minutes time. If you like the idea, please like and subscribe our channel and our videos and also share it with any colleagues or students which may benefit from it. Thank you very much. In many situations, you will find out that you people ask you a question why it is important to understand the background theory of an FE simulation or FEM method. Although you already have commercial professional finite element software available which can take care of everything. But this the idea of this video is to show you that if you use an FE simulation as a black box, it can take you anywhere. So I have brought this example of a cantilever beam simulation which is under a concentric concentrated load of 10 newtons and it has a dimensions of 10 millimeters with cross-sectional area of 1 by 1 millimeters also the material properties i'm using are elastic moduli equals to 200 gigapascals while Poisson's ratio for metallic material can be 0.33 or for this case you can also use 0.0 in fe simulations if you know your basic solid mechanics and you already know that the deflection of this beam under this concentrated loading can be computed using analytical exact solutions and the deflection is given by the relationship given below where w is the force l is the length e is the Young's modulus and i is the moment of inertia of this beam which is bhq over 12 in this case for a rectangular or square section so based on this i compute the deflection and it should come out to be 0.2 millimeters now what i will do i can say okay now what why why, why not i simulate this using an fe compute fe model or something like that so that's what I'm going to do now. So what I do, I take my model into an FE software like Abacus in this case. I construct my FE model using reduced integration plane strain elements. So reduced integration is a type of formulation. Again, these will make be more clear once we reach to the, uh, the lectures where I explain all the theory behind these things. But for the time being, we are just selecting this from the Abacus software. I model it with three different types of mesh. One is 10 by 1 mesh, which is as you see in this diagram on the top left diagram here. The second one is with 4 by thing, 4 by 40 by 4 elements, and you can see this is this one here. And the third one is even more finer mesh with 100 by 10 elements, and they are all reduced integration elements. The problem with these elements is known as the zero energy modes, and what happens in that case is if you run those simulation with let's say 10 by 1 elements your that deflection can be very high as you can see in the this diagram here in the results column deflection is around 9.2 millimeters or so while my exact solution says it's, it should be around 0.2 millimeters then what i do i just so if i i'm just using it as a black box i don't know what's happening what happens what are the consequences or what are the negative side of this right plain strain reduce integration elements and i can end up with this guy type of results now what i do i just refine the mesh I use 40 by 4 and you can see my my deflection is now going back to 0.12 so now we, i have tried to eliminate the zero energy modes or our glassing effects as they call in the finite element world and i am reaching towards the exact exact solution which is here i further refine the mesh and i can get a result which is around that so in this simulations i have used the Poisson's ratio of 0.4 while the analytical solution doesn't take into account that so maybe you can use in your fe simulation 0.0 and it will be fine to construct the FE model of this, I have created another additional tutorial for that in Abacus. So you can go and click on this link below here, and you should the whole step by step procedure is there. So you can construct your own FE model and, and reproduce the results as I've shown in the diagram. So I hope it makes sense that it is very important to understand what are the what is the underlying theory behind FE models and FE simulations, and, and to, it's important to understand what type of elements are there, what are their restrictions, what are their pros and cons which will be explained in next lecture. So I hope this motivates you to learn more about the theoretical from the theoretical perspective of FEM simulations. If you like the idea and if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to our channels. And I look forward with more theoretical things on FEM step-by-step step in next few videos. Thank you very much.